Hi, I'm Eric Deegan. I'm the uh, Division Chief of Arthroplasty Surgery here at UCLA, and I wanted to share my experience of using RadLink with you. I've been using RadLink for the last 10 years for all my direct anterior hip replacements, and um, I've seen it evolve over the last 10 years, and it's a very powerful tool, and I have the utmost confidence in it for helping me um, measure component position and leg lengths and offsets. So I wanted to share this case with you. This is a 75-year-old uh, gentleman who uh, presented to me with end-stage osteoarthritis of his right hip. We templated him before the surgery, and you can see he's just a few millimeters short on the right side compared to the left by a couple millimeters. And so we're going to try and get just a couple millimeters back in length. So. Uh, what I like to do is, uh, during the surgery, we get the patient uh, on the table. We use the HANA table and the patient's supine. And we uh, get a panoramic view, which is five x-rays uh, uh, obtained with the uh, C-arm fluoroscopy. And the computer stitches them together and creates this panoramic view, which is very nice because it has been shown to eliminate uh, problems with parallax if, if you're measuring uh, out to the edges of where the, the trochanters are. So here's a nice preoperative view of what we're looking at. And then we get into the case and uh, first thing I like to do is use Radlink for my cup uh, measurements and you can see here we put the cup in uh, measuring uh, 44 degrees of abduction and 27 degrees of aniversion which are uh, anatomic numbers and you can also if you prefer um, read these numbers in a radiographic form. Uh, and so uh, our target uh, goal for the cup uh, preoperatively based on spinal pelvic parameters was 40 degrees of abduction and 20 to 25 degrees of aniversion. We ended up about 41 of uh, abduction and 18 degrees of aniversion. So uh, pretty much right where I want it to be. Uh, and then uh, we uh, put our uh, trials in and here you can see we've overlaid the preoperative panoramic view I showed previously with the trial in place. And you notice here on the pre-op template, I, I templated a five high uh, active stem. Uh, I needed to go up to get good fixation from a five to a six. It pretty much ended up where I templated, but because the six is a slightly longer neck length, uh, it pushed us a little longer than I wanted to be. So uh, I like the six high, but I knew in my mind uh, I'd probably go down from a plus five to a plus one five to shorten this up and, and equalize our leg lengths. So this is uh, just another way to measure this using a single overlay with the 323 um, uh, software where we can use a um, preoperative CT scan to create a three-dimensional model of the femur, overlay that to account for uh, flexion extension, abduction, adduction, and internal and external rotation and really get an optimal overlay. And you can see with the trial six high plus five head, I'm a little too long. I'm uh, about 3.3 millimeters long and a little too much offset. So I think I'm gonna be good when we go to uh, putting the six high in, uh, dropping down a ball length. Here's our final overlay. Um, you can see here now the six high is in place. I've dropped down to a plus one five uh, trial ball and you can see everything uh, overlays beautifully and that's where we want to be. So here's the final with the final head in and you can see if we draw our lines across, uh, it lines up perfectly on top of the lesser trochanter. And if we go to our final 323 overlay, you can see uh, I got about one millimeter of length back and just under a millimeter of offset. So with our goal of getting two millimeters, you know, we're, we're pretty much right on. So. Uh, this hip felt very stable intraoperatively. I'm very pleased with this. And I think this just really illustrates uh, three different ways that you can use RadLink to uh, assess leg lengths and offsets. So hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know.